Okay, so here we go with part two, and we're going to continue off where we left off. So again, I put these images up because this is what you're going to see on the final and on the regions in June as well. And what we're looking at here is another plant cell. Now, how do we know it's a plant cell? I guarantee you 99% of the time the question tells you that it's a plant cell or an animal cell. Uh, if you don't know if it's an animal or plant cell, you can look and see that it has a large vacuole, a large bubble in it, which is usually the vacuole. It has chloroplasts, which are these dark blobs here. The tiny dots are actually ribosomes. And it has two outer layers, the cell wall and the cell membrane. Also, the shape, the shape is usually a rectangular shape. But here, it's labeling one thing. And just know that whenever you see something that's jelly-like, a jelly-like substance, I'm sorry, a, a something that looks like a jelly bean, with a little squiggly line in it, it's the mitochondria. This is where cellular respiration happens. This is where ATP energy is made, the powerhouse of the cell. Know your levels of organization from smallest to largest and from largest to smallest. So smallest being the cell, then tissue, then organ, organ system, organism. Okay? Next. Remember your nutrients. Carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, vitamins, and minerals. You need this in order to survive. Know what your elements stand for. Okay, C is carbon, H is hydrogen, O is oxygen, N is nitrogen. Know that this is carbon dioxide, this is water, and this is glucose. C6H1206 is glucose. Now, you will definitely have questions that will ask you if something is a protein, lipid, or carbohydrate. Know that this is a protein because it has a nitrogen group and it also has a COH group. But the thing that you need to remember to know is actually the shape and also that N, that nitrogen, that is a protein. Next, this one, these long chains are lipids. This is why fat stores so much energy. Fats store energy, lipids store energy, and the reason is because they're such complex molecules and they look like long chains of ladders. This one is a carbohydrate sugar, specifically glucose. Look, remember that glucose is C6H12O6? Let's count how many carbons there are. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six carbons. Now, carbohydrates usually have a ring, okay? They usually have a ring of one, two, three, four, five, six sides, okay? So this ring is what you want to uh, make sure you understand when looking to see if it's a carbohydrate sugar, okay? Now, know the difference between inorganic and organic substances. Organic means that they have a carbon and hydrogen backbone. Inorganic, they do not have carbon and hydrogen together. And organic substances are usually found in living things. But living things also contain both organic and inorganic. So living organisms have both. Okay? Glucose, is it organic or inorganic? It's organic because it has carbon and hydrogen. Is carbon dioxide inorganic or organic? It is inorganic because it does not have carbon and hydrogen, but notice how we do have carbon dioxide in our bodies when we make ATP energy. Remember, we also make carb carbon dioxide. Hold on, I gotta get my dog off of the bed. Okay, I'm back. <sighs> Can't let my dog on the bed. No, no, no. Okay. Ethane. Is this organic or inorganic? It's organic because it has carbon and hydrogen. Here we have steric acid. Is this organic or inorganic? It is organic because it has carbon and hydrogen. Sodium chloride is inorganic because it does not have carbon and hydrogen together. 
Examples of organic substances, things that you will only find in living things that contain a carbon and hydrogen backbone, proteins, lipids, carbohydrates, and DNA. So again, these are all things that you will find in living things, organic substances. Okay, so there are plenty of questions about enzymes. Remember, enzymes are also known as catalysts. Enzymes are proteins. The thing that enzymes do is that they help to speed a chemical reaction. They either digest or they synthesize. They either make or break things in your body and biochemical processes. Things that can affect or stop the enzyme from working is if the enzyme is in the wrong temperature or in the wrong pH. Enzymes have to be in the best environment for them to have optimum reaction rates, okay? So what are the two things that, that enzymes do? They make or break, they digest or synthesize. So for example, you're gonna see something like this, and this is a reaction happening, this is a sugar, and remember that enzymes are lock and key. So this enzyme, catalyst enzyme, knew that it has to do something with this complex sugar because it fit perfectly. Now, it started with this and it ended with this. So now we have two simpler sugars. We had a complex sugar, now we have a simpler sugar, which is smaller. So this enzyme, which is also known as catalyst, digested. It broke it. It broke it into two, which made it simpler. Remember that this is also how digestion works in our digestive system. We digest, break down foods either mechanically or chemically so that our bodies can absorb it. And our bodies can absorb it better because they're smaller when they're digested. Here are graphs that you're going to see based off of enzymes, enzyme reactions. So remember that the temperature has to be perfect and the pH has to be perfect. So both of these graphs represent the same enzyme. So what is the best temperature for this enzyme? Well, you look at the highest level of reaction, the, where it was working the best. And when you look down on the chart in the x-axis, the best reaction rate is around 35 to 38, 35 to 38 um, degrees Celsius. Now, what is the best pH for this enzyme. Now we go again up and we work our way down and it's 8. 8 is the best pH for this enzyme. So more on the basic side, not the acidic side because remember this is acidic, this is basic, 7 is neutral. Now here one more time, what is the best temperature for this particular enzyme? We go to the highest level, work our way down. This one's more like 37, 38, 38 or 37 degrees Celsius. Human body system. So this particular human body system is the digestive system. And we know now that the digestive system breaks down food molecules so that it can be absorbed in the small intestine. Let me just make sure I have, just checking on my time, it's 15 minutes at a time. So here we have the mouth, we have the salivary glands, the tongue, the teeth that mechanically and chemically break down food with enzymes in the saliva. We have the esophagus where the food goes down. We have the stomach here that has hydrochloric acid and breaks down mechanically and me um, chemically and mechanically the food. Here we have the pancreas that produces the hormone called insulin. So if you get any question whatsoever, ladies and gentlemen, that ask about the, the pancreas, as, as weird or complex as the reading is, the pancreas makes the hormone called insulin. Insulin, insulin. Here we have the gallbladder. Here we have the liver. The liver breaks down red blood cells. It also makes bile, which helps digest fat. Bile is sto stored in the gallbladder. Gold the gallbladder, um, again, helps distribute bile into the small intestine. The small intestine is where digestion happens, is where diffusion happens, 
where food molecules go from high concentration to low, and it's where your food molecules go into your bloodstream because of the help of the microvilli. And here is the colon large intestine where water is absorbed and where fecal matter is stored. Now, what does this digestive system do again? Breaks down carbohydrates into simple sugars so that the body can absorb it through the small intestine. And this is with the help of enzymes. Remember the following malfunctions of the digestive system. An ulcer is an erosion of the surface of a portion of the digestive tract. So it's like an irritation. Constipation is reducing the water content of feces. So it's when too much water is being absorbed. So the feces, is, it gets very hard, which then makes it very difficult to pass the stool. Um, and it can lead to constipation. Diarrhea is not having enough water absorbed. It's having very little water absorbed, so the feces is too watery. That causes diarrhea. Gallstones is the accumulation of hardened bile in the, gall, in the gallbladder. That is also a malfunction. Now, what human body system is this? This is part of the excretory system, the urinary system, where A is the kidneys, B is the ureter, C is the bladder, and D is the urethra. Now remember this question, you're going to be asked to choose pair one, pair two, or pair three, and discuss how these um, human body systems work together. Now, this is the muscular system, the nervous system, which you have the brain, spinal cord, and peripheral nerves, the respiratory system, which you have the lungs, the uh, breathing tube, nose and mouth, the digestive system, circulatory system which involves the heart and blood vessels and the urinary system so you want to discuss how they work together well you know that the brain has to send messages to make muscles move the oxygen breathing in oxygen and eating food together make um, help the cells make ATP energy the circulatory system and the excretory system work together in releasing toxins Okay, releasing toxins. Now, do you remember malfunctions that happen in other human body systems? Well, let me pause and start another video to continue the discussion for your final.